The Poco F4 has not been as well received as the Poco F3, which have incredible value. The most worth it phone of 2021. It's the Poco F3. The biggest tech reviewers love the F3, but 15 months later, those channels aren't mentioning the F4 at all. And current reviews aren't performing nearly as well as other new phones, which means we need to ask, what's wrong with the Poco F4? Part of the problem is that if you're familiar with the F3, you already know the F4. As a huge fan of last year's model, I actually made 10 videos about the F3, I can tell you that the new Poco feels every bit as fast. What looks to be the same side-mounted fingerprint scanner is just as responsive for unlocking, and opening apps or navigating the UI feels effortless. Again, we have the Snapdragon 870, LPDDR5 RAM, plus UFS 3.1 storage, and benchmarks reflect these high-end, mid-range internals with respectable scores in Geekbench and 3D Mark Wildlife. The F4 is able to run reliably without overheating and throttling on the 20 minute wildlife stress test as well as a 45 minute run using the CPU throttling test where it maintained 87% of its peak performance. Pretty impressive until you look at the Poco X4 GT. We'll come back to that. In another smart move by Poco, they've continued to use last year's display, a 6.67 inch Samsung AMOLED screen with 120 Hz refresh rate and a 360 Hz touch sampling rate. Its full HD plus resolution is nice and sharp and it gets bright at a peak of 1300 nits, which makes it great for even outdoor use. Just not in heavy rain since it only carries an IP53 splash resistance rating and don't drop it either. Its Gorilla Glass 5 screen will probably hold up okay, but not the weaker tempered glass back. Over Overall, the build quality and design isn't as interesting as, say, the Nothing Phone 1, but we'll come back to that. If you're thinking the fast processor and near flagship level screen make the F4 a great gaming phone, you're correct. Genshin, Asphalt, Call of Duty, Wordle, they all play well, even at higher graphics settings. Now games like Genshin don't play flawlessly, since this is a chip that basically launched three years ago, but it's still more than adequate for even some demanding gamers. Just not at the same level as something like the Motorola G200, but we'll come back to that. One thing it seems like they didn't reuse is the vibration motor. Haptics aren't bad on the F4, they're nice and tight, but they're not strong enough. The camera was the weakest point of the F3, and thankfully Poco improved it this year with a 64 megapixel main cam with OIS that takes good photos and can be further improved with Gcam. Video's not bad either, and it shoots usable 4K footage. Plus it works really well with motion cam for raw video if you want to get all the quality you can from the F4. Now it's no Pixel 6a, and we'll come back to that, but it does compare favorably to the X4 GT, which I included in my full F4 camera review. Link in the description. By the way, if you're enjoying this review so far, please give it a like. I would really appreciate it. Unfortunately, there's no headphone jack here, but audio from the stereo speakers or Bluetooth has been very good, even managing to be fuller and louder than other phones, like the Pixel 6a. The only other new feature, 67 watt charging from the included charger, is certainly a worthwhile improvement. Charging from 1% to full takes just under 40 minutes for me. Sadly, this year the capacity did not increase and the 4500 milliamp hour battery can usually only last almost a day and a half with my typical use most of the time. It's good battery life, just not great like the X4 GT, but we'll come back to that. The software running the show here is Android 12, wrapped in Poco's MIUI for Poco operating system, and it's not my favorite version of Android. But I will say a benefit of releasing basically the same phone twice is that the OS has been much more stable and nearly bug free, especially compared to the first six months of using last year's Poco F3. For the F4, Asphalt initially thought I was using a controller for some reason. Poco still refuses to let you use third party launchers like Nova with navigation gestures and there are ads in the first party apps, but they can be turned off. You know, the typical Poco, Xiaomi, Redmi complaints. Real quick, the only other issue I had was with carrier compatibility in the States. The F4 is supported on T-Mobile and some T-Mobile MVNOs like Mint Mobile, but I had to enable voice over LTE using a dialer code before I could actually make and receive voice calls over the network. So if there's nothing really wrong with the F4, how does interest in a series go from here to here? I think there's three reasons. The first is Poco's stronger portfolio of popular phones this year. The X3 Pro didn't make the splash that the X4 Pro has. The F3 GT barely grabbed one third of the attention of the F4 GT. But the Poco device that's likely taken the most sales from the F4 
is the X4 GT. 2021's X3 GT only ever became about half as popular as the F3, but the X4 GT has launched with more interest than the F4 and continues to earn attention. And it makes sense. It's less expensive with a more powerful processor, better battery life, and a 144 hertz screen. It's not a perfect phone or as well-rounded as the F4, but what a hard choice for a lot of customers considering these two devices. The second reason is better competition from other phone brands. Need a better camera? The Pixel 6a has gotten a much wider release than in recent years, and it's hugely popular. Looking for something with better build quality and standout design? Get the Nothing Phone 1. Do you really want a budget, high-end gaming phone? Get the Motorola G200. In fact, the F3 had about 18 close competitors in terms of value in 2021. But this year, things have changed. More brands are making better phones that cost less money, about 41 phones by my count. That's a lot more competition. What this all really means is that we're looking at the difference between a phone that's the best in value versus a phone that's just great value in a growing sea of other great value phones. It's bad news for the Poco F4, but great news for customers. And if you're in the States, but want access to that great sea of phones, check out Beckix Tech. Unlike a US carrier store, at Beckix, you can choose from more than just Apple, Samsung, Google, or most Motorola. You can get Poco devices like the F4 and X4 GT. You can shop from brands like Xiaomi, Asus, Oppo, Sony, Nothing, and a lot more. Worried about a warranty? Don't. Because unlike other import companies, Beckix Tech provides a year-long warranty with your purchase. If you want to save a little money and help out this channel, please use my discount code phonecompatibility-bxt2 at checkout. Also check out my full Poco F4 camera review right here. And please leave a comment if you have any questions about the F4 and I will answer them perfectly. Yes, perfectly. Just like the way I bake chocolate chip cookies, Janine.